All right, everybody, it's Ross, and we're inside for today's video, as you guys could probably tell. Um, and the reason why we're inside is because today we're looking at my citrus trees. And for those of you who don't know, I live in the Philadelphia area. It's, it's a zone 7A climate on the hardiness zone. Um, actually, we're in late January right now of filming. Tonight, it's going to be about 10 degrees or maybe even slightly lower than 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So what that means is if you want to grow citrus in a colder place, typically a place where it usually gets below 25 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe even to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the variety, you're going to want to bring these in um, inside some kind of structure because the fruits, they you know, typically ripen during the winter. So if I have, you know, let's say kumquats or finger limes on my trees and they're ripening right now and I had them outside, it just, it just wouldn't work. It's just too cold here. This, however, out of all the things that I've grown in the Philadelphia area, all the fruits, all the perennial fruit trees, shrubs, vines, and then if you were to even try to push the zone a little bit and maybe venture into tropical things, this is probably the only super tropical or more tropical thing that I would recommend growing so far. I would actually highly recommend it. If you guys live really anywhere up north, um, well, maybe depending on how long your summer is, um, but certainly here in the Philadelphia area, I would argue most of the Northeast, along the Mid-Atlantic, uh, you know, this is certainly doable. This is definitely something where we put them outside in containers, on the patio, in a lot of sun, in a lot of heat, we keep them well watered. We feed them all year round. We feed them heavily because citrus trees are definitely heavy feeders. And then they flower in the spring outside. You know, the bees and all that, they're going to be active when these guys flower. Um, then they set their fruits. It's kind of cruise control mode at that point from the spring, the summer, even the fall. Then I bring them inside here. You know, it's, it's nice to be able to move around containers or to be able to move them around, not let's say in your house, but maybe anywhere. Maybe you have a structure, a greenhouse, something like that. So then they can actually fruit and produce a reasonable crop. And uh, I would argue again, that I think this is definitely the, one of the fruit trees that you could definitely push the zone, um, push your zone for that actually makes sense. You know, sometimes we try to grow things like bananas or avocados and mangoes and and you know maybe there's a will there's if there's a will there's always a way but i'm telling you this one just is rather easy and if you know how to grow any fruit tree in a container you can do this it's going to take maybe a little bit of time i know some people maybe even watching right now you know you got a fruit tree a citrus tree a meyer lemon or something at home depot and you're struggling with it um, you've really got to get a good green thumb for these trees. It took me quite a few years. I mean, I've been doing this now for, I don't know, seven or eight years. This tree actually right here is about five, maybe six years old. Prior to that, I killed so many citrus trees just to be able to get to this point. You know, so you really got to put in the time, I think, to get a green thumb. But if you have a green thumb and you, you know how to take care of plants and house, house plants specifically, you can do this. And, and it's one of those house plants that actually gives you something, you know, like uh, when I first started growing fruit and, and vegetables, um, I started out with house plants and I got really good at that before I moved on to what, you know, something can actually give me something in return. And, and to me, that made a lot more sense. I know there's obviously a, a beauty and a feng shui and a really nice feel to house plants, but for me, you know, this is a great, a great segue, I think, into actually growing food for people who are obsessed with houseplants. So, um, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the trees really quickly. So again, that was the whole life cycle of the trees, right? We bring them out in the spring. When things are above 32, we put them outside. When our last frost has passed, we put them outside. When our, you know, first frost is coming, we bring them inside. Um, in terms of actually how to take care of these, growing them in containers is really no different than any other container plant, other than I would say they really like to be watered in well. Um, they like a lot of air in the soil. So I would say, you know, if you can give them better, a better well-draining soil, you're going to be better off. And they really love to be fed well. 
Um, so a lot of these trees, you'll even see it, especially on the younger ones that you may get from nurseries, typically will have some chlorosis or yellowing leaves that just don't look that great. Um, this is just, again, very typical and a great sign, surefire sign, that there's something wrong with your soil, whether that's too much moisture, not enough moisture, not enough nutrients. Typically, I find it's just a combination of, you know, not enough air, um, maybe too much, you know, moisture in your soil, uh, and then, of course, not enough nutrients. For me, at least, I'm noticing, especially on the younger trees, you know, this one here is the same age as the one right next to it, and it's a clear difference, I'll show you, actually, in health. You can see this is what really they should look like, how green and shiny and dark uh, these leaves are with none of those spots and you can't see the veins of the leaf as an example like on that one they should be dark green so this tree is just quite a big difference look at this thing so what is the what is the deal right why why does this tree look so sad well for me it's just in the soil I've realized that a lot of the soil I use sometimes it's just not as well broken down as I'd like you know it's 50 percent bark 50 percent compost Sometimes, unfortunately, the products that you guys can find and may actually use in your soils, the compost may not be broken down as much as you'd like. And that ties up a lot of the nutrients in the soil. Um, and therefore, the tree doesn't get those nutrients that it needs. And it just, the trees really just tend to struggle. Uh, and I actually find nowadays that I'm really paying attention to this, it can, you, you can really waste an entire season. Um, an entire year, you know, the whole idea is to get these young plants as big as quickly as possible so they can support some of these fruits. The trees behind me or the trees behind these here in the front, these I've had for multiple seasons, maybe th uh, about three or four years. This larger one now is in its fifth or sixth season. Um, and anything back here that's at least in its second season can put out a pretty significant crop of uh of citrus it's really quite amazing um how precocious and how early these things can flower um you know actually what you may even end up doing if the tree is really healthy when you receive it it may actually have some fruit on it or even some flowers on it or shortly after you get it, it it could flower and that's a great sign that something's going well but typically if the tree isn't doing well it's not going to flower it's not going to um even set the fruits if it does flower, or it may even drop the fruits. Um, so it's really, I think, important to notice, you know, some of these things and really get, you know, your, your tree set up in a really nice state. It's not always easy with these container citrus trees. You know, this is not where they're, <laughs> they're meant to be grown. Um, and I think, especially in this indoor environment, this can be very tricky for certain people. Um, you know, again, it took me years. So some of the things that I look out for beyond just the soil health, you know, making sure they're watered in well is also pests. I had a few years of maybe even some spider mites or scale because typically in our indoor environments, those pests thrive and they really love to attack these citrus trees. The nurseries you may get them from already have the pests on them. So it can be difficult dealing with them, but Assuming you put them outside and you have a decent bug ecosystem out there, a lot of that can just disappear in one season. Um, so I wouldn't really worry too much about it, but it's important now that they're in here because I really do think when they're outside, they're really just in cruise control for me. I mean, I hook them up to a drip timer and I don't even worry about them. I feed them well, maybe once or twice you know, with a slow release, and then I forget about it. Um, once they're in here, I really got to keep an eye on them because they also, even though it's colder, there's no sun really for the most part at all. I mean, the sun comes in through the window, but it's really insignificant, I find, compared to you know being outside. Um, they still require a lot of water. Um, it's kind of crazy, actually, how quickly these dry out. And you know, some of the other house plants I have that maybe are not as big, maybe they don't have as much you know, um, leaf matter is these surface area. Um, you know, I may only water them once a month or maybe once every other month. Well, these I'm finding I'm better off probably watering them maybe once every two to three weeks. 
Um, and that's a full, you know, letting them dry out and then watering them all in again. I've been slacking on that and some of the branches we'll look at, you'll see what that is exactly because you'll see the leaves start to shrivel up and turn a bit crispy and it happens really quick. So that's a big thing I think to pay attention to, like the blueberry as an example. As soon as the blueberry gets super dry, it just dies back very quickly. So the leaves will start to crumple up. Then you'll have the, the actual branches die back, especially the smaller, thinner, weaker branches that the tree doesn't necessarily want. And if you really don't water it, then the whole thing will just slowly start to die back. And that's just super not good for next year's crop. I had that happen to me last year on this particular kumquat tree. This is a uh, Fakushu, it's called, this variety. And uh, this tree actually was this size last year. But in here, in this environment, I neglected it, didn't water it enough, and most of the tree died back. And then, of course, it's... You know, they're quite resilient trees. It did end up coming back. As you can see, it's a pretty sizable tree at this point. But, you know, I have a lot less fruits this year. Um, the fruits are actually somehow better, oddly enough. But um, last year I had about 40-ish fruits on that tree, and it was only two or three years old. You know, can you imagine how many fruits I'd have this year? I have been harvesting quite a bit, but... Um, you know, the crop was nowhere near as significant, I think, as last year. Um, so we're, we're playing catch up now at this point. And that's not just, just not what you want. I'd also recommend when the trees are younger, like a tree like this in its first year, you get it from the nursery and you should get these guys in the spring. I don't recommend getting them before your, your last frost, you know? Uh, so my last frost is about May 1st. That's when you should get your tree delivered. You can sign up or at least select for most of these nurseries when you can get them. Don't let them, don't put them in here as a house plant all winter. That's just a negative environment. You know, essentially having them outside in the spring and in the summer, it really boosts their, let's say there's a, there's a bar or something like that, you know, and for every day they're outside in the summer and the spring, the bar goes up every day they're in here in this environment, the bar slowly starts to go down. So they can't be in here forever. I mean, they could, I guess, if you really took good care of them. But in my mind, the bar slowly starts to go down. So there becomes at some point a breaking point where the bar just meets a point where you don't want to be. And I would just highly recommend, you know, getting the trees in the spring, growing them out for an entire season, once you grow them out for an entire season, then we put them outside again the following year, and then they'll start to flower, assuming they are healthy. That's a big assumption. Assuming they've got some good size to them. And then, of course, if they're flowering, setting the fruits, and growing at the same time, that's really what you want. That's something that's a good sign for being able to support the fruit on the tree. I've had uh, this tree back here, actually. It's a bit smaller than the others that are the same age, got them at the same time, same nursery. This tree is finally now growing because in the first two or three seasons that I had it from the nursery, it had fruit on it. And this year I said, oh, enough's enough. The tree is a runt. It's, it was basically about this size uh, that we're looking at. And I said, you know what? I want the tree to grow. I want it to get strong fill out the roots in its container, um, and then I'll worry about the fruit. And that's just a better idea, I think, for most of these trees. But typically in that second year, the second spring, the second summer, you can get something significant. Um, so that's kind of how to take care of them. I think how to, you know, some of the things to look out for in a colder place. Obviously, this is way different if you lived in a place where you could plant the tree in the ground. I mean, that would be the life. We're not also lucky. Um, but if you want great citrus, you can have that. There's nothing that's stopping you. You just got to put in the time and the, and the work, learn this process here. I think people even put them in their basement. You know, they bring them in as long as it's, you know, you're not overwatering them or underwatering them. I think they can relatively do decent. I think you probably want to give them some light. But to be honest with you, this kumquat and this tree back here, this mandarin tree, really doesn't get a ton of light. I mean, even that window 
even if it's, it is a south facing window, it really doesn't give them a ton of light. So I imagine, you know, I have to try it, I guess, putting them in an area that really in the house that doesn't get a lot of light or much at all and seeing what happens. Now, I guess one other recommendation before I show you guys some of the fruits is that you want to choose the right variety. You know, um, the sweeter varieties like, um, you know, things like mandarins, things like navel oranges, blood oranges, uh, tangelos, etc. Those typically are not going to do well because they say, and this is, I don't, I haven't really seen this firsthand for myself. I'm very anxious actually to see if my mandarin tree here that has finally has some fruit on it after five or six years to see if this tree will actually produce sweet fruit. That's what it's meant to do. But a lot of these citrus orchards in California, in, uh, in Florida, they rely on these colder nights to actually sweeten up the fruit. Here, we don't get cold nights. It's minimum 65 in this room. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I don't think it's really doable, but if you want to try it, you can. So you want to really focus on the sour citrus varieties like kumquats, that's a Fukushu, as I mentioned. This here is a Kalamundin. This here is a Bears seedless lime. I have a Lisbon lemon over there. We have an Australian finger lime in the front. And that's a lime quat, which is, you know, the cross between a, a kumquat and a lime. So any of those, those sour crosses would also really work out. And I find, believe it or not, they do better just in general in containers because the fruits are smaller. I mean, that's why I'm trying this mandarin. They do produce smaller fruits, but because they're smaller fruits, they need less energy to produce. They typically produce more fruit. They typically flower at multiple times of the year. So you get a, a longer you know, array of fruit set, a longer season. Maybe you even have uh, fruits on some of these trees. You may even have fruits like in the spring and in the winter or in the summer and in the winter. So I think it's uh, pretty amazing if you can kind of get this right, choose the right varieties, the ones that perform the best in these containers is really typically smaller fruited citrus and the sour varieties. I personally really like limes and lemons. I cook with them all the time. So, you know, being able to have that here uh, is just amazing. And I'll tell you what, so these kumquats I'm gonna harvest, I've been eating these for a couple weeks now Probably had about 25 in total on this tree. These are massive. I mean, this is the size of a golf ball, basically. Um, I've been really impressed with this tree this year. This was not the case last year. I think they even looked a bit different, which is a bit strange how this one, you know, uh, is such a different fruit this year. But it's very good. Um, these are filled with juice. You know, kumquats, for those of you who don't know, right, they're, they're sour on the inside, which is why we can grow them so easily here. They don't have to be sweet. And the skin is sweet. So when I take a bite, it's actually very, very good. Um, super fragrant. This is one of the few citrus where you actually eat the skin. You don't peel it, so I'm not doing it wrong. Um, this is how it's meant to be eat. There is a seed there, but typically they're almost seedless, this variety. I've become a really big fan of this. This is such a nice wintertime snack. So what I was kind of getting at is that, you know, out of all the plants I've grown here, guys, all the fruits, all the vegetables I've tried, there really aren't that many that you can eat now. You know, the persimmon is one that lasts. You could almost have them all winter and even into the spring. Maybe you could store some apples, store some pears, you know, have things that last throughout the winter. But this is a fresh fruit right off of your own tree. I mean, this is just super hard to beat, in my opinion. And they're so good. I mean, this just really invigorates you and makes you think about the growing season when it's frozen outside, you know? This is like really something I think gets you excited for for what's to come. Super, super good. So 
What I also have here, well, that one actually had two seeds in it. Interesting. Sorry about that, guys. Difficult getting the seed out of my mouth. Um, so what I also have harvested is my finger limes. And these are getting all kinds of attention lately um, as, you know, something for foodies, something uh, a little bit different. Let's try to get the camera here to focus. They look a little bit weird, but I promise you they really are lime caviar. That's what people really compare these to. This, I would argue, is the easiest citrus tree I've ever grown. Um, I have a feeling the Calamundin is going to be very easy. These kumquats are just very easy in general. The Australian finger lime produces a super good amount of fruit. It's weird how the foliage uh, is because it's a bit smaller. The leaves are very small. But it just seemingly produces a ton of fruit. The tree grows well. And it continually harvests or continually flowers in such an um, interesting way. Let me break one of these open. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. I need a knife, but I'll just bite it. Now this one actually has, it looks like a little bit of mold inside. So we won't do this one and we won't eat this one. But you can really see the, you know, the caviar that just comes out of this is just amazing. All these little vesicles of lime is actually what they're called, the little pockets of uh, juice and gel. These are very crunchy, give great texture to sushi. I put them on top of my nigiri. These are amazing. I'm actually, you know, a lot of times things don't live up to the hype, uh, but these really are impressive. Let me try another one here. Mmm, they're so fragrant too. All right, so here we go. This is what everybody kind of wants to see that knows it. Where you squeeze this, and then they come popping out. And I'm telling you, these are just to die for, these little things. It's like candy, you know? Um, super crunchy, awesome texture, great acidity. You know, they don't taste exactly like a lime either. It is a little bit different. Um, so not really, I would say, typically a lime flavor, but similar. Super, super good. Um, and again, super easy to grow as well. So for me, um, I've been really impressed with these trees. I think... Uh, you know, I think they're well worth growing. This is my Australian finger lime back here. You can see actually it did flower in the house, but I have not been watering these trees as much as I should. As I mentioned, you know, that's something you really got to stay on top of. And you can see all the leaves actually have started to crumple up. See that? So I got to get these trees some water very soon. Um, and then here's, you know, maybe a shot over here of the, uh, the kumquat. A lot of fruits on some of the branches. And then the other cool thing is just this mandarin that, you know, finally after five or six years is now putting out some fruits. I was worried that the rootstock actually had taken over and instead left the variety uh, of mandarin in its dust. Or maybe I cut it out and the rootstock was the one thing that was left. And, um, you know, that takes a long time for some of these rootstocks to fruit to find out. And also the fruit quality typically isn't nearly as good. Um, so I'm happy to see that these are probably what they say is a tangerine um, from Stark Brothers. And um, yeah, we'll get to see actually if it does produce sweet fruit. So that's kind of it here, guys. Um, 
that's a shot of these these citrus trees. They really uh, produce high quality fruit. I was shocked, especially this mandarin or this um, this kumquat here is really impressive. Along with these finger limes, uh, it's hard to beat, you know. And I, I'm sure at some point when I get these limes and lemons and other things more mature, the quality is just going to be right up there as well. You know, it's not something that we grow here and we sacrifice in quality. I think we can still do it uh, and in a reasonable way. So thanks for watching this one, guys. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care.